Hi, it's Chester at Blue Peak and Computer Training, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to highlight or conditionally format a whole row based on the value in another cell. So if I select a name in this drop down list, it highlights the relevant rows within my data. Okay, let's see how this can be done. We want to highlight all Aresilef transactions in this list. And to do this, we're going to have to write a little formula, a formula for the conditional formatting. And when you write a formula for conditional formatting, it must be a logical test. In other words, it has to resolve to true or false. What I tend to do when I'm writing formulas for conditional formatting is that I write the formulas out in a table that reflects the table that the conditional formatting needs to be applied to. Then I can really clearly see where I'm getting my true and false results. So let's start here in the sales rep column and I'm going to write my logical test. Now this one is fairly simple. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say, does this sales rep name equal this sales rep name here, the one that's been chosen in this list? And if I press enter, you can see I get a false. Now I want to better copy this down and wherever it finds Resi left in a cell, I want it to return true. If you look down this list, I seem to have all forces, despite the fact that I have some resi lefts in this list. Now the trick here is that we need to fix our reference to A2, because as we've copied this cell down, it changes both the B reference and the A reference. You can see that if I've copied it down once, it moves the cell references down once. Well, I always want to compare the values in this list with this cell here. So I need to fix my reference to A2. And I can do that by clicking anywhere in the vicinity of that cell reference and pressing F4 on my keyboard. If F4 doesn't work, just type the dollars in. You can see you've got one before the A and one before the two. And I press enter. And now if I copy this down, you can see that wherever it found Resi left in column B, it now returns a true. Now, if I copy this formula over to the date column, you can see that unfortunately I get all forces again. Now let's have a look at the formula that's being copied over. If I click here, it's now saying, does the value in A5 equal Resi left? Well, that's going to be impossible because the sales rep values are always in column B. So what I should conclude from this is that the B always needs to stay as a B, but the five needs to change to a six, seven, eight as it's copied down. Before I copy this formula, I need to fix that B reference. So I'm going to press F4 once, twice, three times. And what that gives me is a dollar just before the B. If the F4 key isn't working, all you're going to have to do is type a dollar in that position. That dollar fixes the B. If I had a dollar here rather than here, it would fix the five. So I'll copy this down and then copy across. And you can see now that I get the trues in this column where Resi left appears in column B. Now I have a formula that I can copy across the entire table. The whole row returns true. And this is the key to applying conditional formatting to a whole row based on a value in another cell. Now I have this formula, I can use it in my conditional formatting. So I'm going to copy it in the first cell in this table, Control C. Then I select my data starting in the first cell in this table, selecting down and across. Now, if you have a very large table, what you can do is select the first row and use the shortcut key, control shift, down arrow key. The key thing to realize here is that the first cell we selected is the active cell. That's why it has a white background. It's selected, but it doesn't have the dark background that the other selected cells have. So the formula that I've created for the conditional formatting is initially going to apply to the active cell and then be copied across and down the other cells that I've selected in exactly the same way that we copied the formula across and down this table. So I go to conditional formatting, I go to new rule, and in this list, I select the last option, use a formula to determine which cells to format. Then in this box here, format values where this formula is true, I paste in control V my formula. Now I need to choose a format to apply when this formula returns true. So I get to the format button and I'm just going to choose a light blue. 
click on OK, click on OK. And now you can see that where we have trues in this table, we have the formatting applied in this table. If I change the name up here, let's say we had Tony Jack, it changes which rows are formatted. It would be nice to have a drop down list of names in this cell rather than having to type the names in manually. And depending on the version of Excel you have, there are different methods. I'm going to show a method for the later versions of Excel. So you can try this and if it doesn't work, I'll show you another method. What I want to do in a cell, sort of outside the tables that I'm working in, I'm going to use the unique function and I'm going to specify these cells here and then close the bracket. And what that does is return the unique values it found in this column. I then want to sort these values in alphabetical order. So I can use the sort function for this. I put the unique formula within the sort function and it will by default sort in alphabetical order A to Z. Then what I would do is I'd click up here. I'd go to the data tab on my ribbon and go to data validation. I would allow a list. I'd click in this source box here. I'd click into the first cell that contains a unique name. And then I'd use the hash symbol. Click on OK. And now I have a drop down list of names that I can choose from. If this method doesn't work with unique and sort, all is not lost. What you can do is select the names, copy, go over to a cell outside the data that you're working in and paste. Now click into any cell, go to data and click on this button here, remove duplicates. It will tell you how many duplicates have found and removed and how many unique values remain. Then I can right click into the cell and sort A to Z. Then what you would do is you click into the cell go to data validation obviously i already have a source but i can delete that and i can then select those cells click on ok and you'll have exactly the same effect then what you can do is you can hide these columns if you don't want them to appear right click hide and the drop down list will still appear but there'll be no apparent source in your spreadsheet for them let's go on to our next example here we want to specify a brand and for every purchase or transaction that includes a product with that brand is highlighted in the list. The trick here is to be able to look for this brand within the product description. You can see that all these product descriptions start with the brand name. So I'm going to use the same technique again. I'm going to write a formula for our conditional formatting. And remember that the formula for conditional formatting always has to be a logical test resolved to true or false. In this instance, I'm going to use the find function. Now, what the find function does, it finds the position of a given text string within another text string. So I want to find the position of this text, that's our find text value, within this text here. I don't need to worry about the last argument start number. You can see it's non-mandatory. I will need to put some dollars in here. So if I fix the A2, I need to specify that our product descriptions are always in column C. And to do that, I put a dollar before the C, pressing F4 until I get that dollar. Close the bracket, press enter. And what it does is, if I copy this down, is it returns a number if this value is found within the product description. Remember what it's doing is it's returning the numeric position of that value. I'm not interested in what number it actually is, but I am interested in the fact that the find function has returned a number. If it has, I know that MNS is somewhere in that product description. Now to turn this into a logical test, I can use the isNumber function whole thing in is number and is number returns true if it finds a number and false if it doesn't now i can copy this across all these columns and you can see that wherever we have mns in the product description we now get a true result right across the row same process here i copy this formula in the first cell in this kind of formula table i select all the cells that i want to apply the conditional formatting to the active cell is the same top left cell go to home conditional formatting 
new rule, use a formula to determine what cells to format. And I paste in my formula and I choose a format to apply if this returns true. So there we are, M and S now highlighted. If I choose basics, it would highlight the basics products as well. Let's move on to the next example where we base our condition on a number. I want to highlight all records where the transaction quantity was three. This time, let's write the formula here. So we would say, is our quantity here, which I need to fix on column, D5 equal to our criteria up here in A2, which I need to fix with $2. So if I press enter, copy across, copy down, you can see that wherever we have a quantity of three, we then have trues across the row. I take that formula there, I copy it, select all the cells I want to apply the conditional formatting to. Conditional formatting, new rule, use a formula, paste the formula in, format, choose a color, click on OK, and it applies the format. If I put two in, it highlights the transactions with a quantity of two. What if I wanted to highlight all numbers that were greater than or less than a particular number. What we can do is say, is this number less than the quantity? Obviously, we have to put our dollars in. And we can copy that across and down. And you can see any numbers that are less than three now get a true result. But let's make this a little bit more flexible. Maybe we want to be able to type greater or less than in this cell. And I'm actually going to create a little drop down list for this. So if we select that cell, we go to data, data validation, and we'll say list. And this time I'm just going to type greater than, comma, less than. Click on OK. So now I've got those two options here. So I can choose greater than or less than and then type a number in here. And I want our logical test to respond not only to the quantity typed here, but to whatever is typed in here. Now to do this, I could write a little if statement. I could say if A2, which I need to fix, is equal to greater than. Notice I type that in quotation marks because it's the text value. Then the value of true is this value, which I need to fix on column, greater than this value here. I could then do another if, open bracket, and I could say is A2, which I need to fix, equal to less than. Value of true would be is this value fixed on column less than the quantity, which I need to fix. I'm not going to specify a value of false because I want it to return false if neither of those tests are met. I'll just close the bracket twice press enter and then copy across, copy down. If I deleted the comparison text, I'd get all forces. But if I selected greater than, it would highlight any numbers that are greater than my threshold here. And if I chose less than, it would highlight those that are less than the threshold that I put here. Now, obviously, you could also use uh, less than or equal to. And to do that, you just put an equal sign in after the comparison operator. Same with greater than, you could also put an equal sign in. We won't do that here. And if you have a later version of Excel, then you'll know you also have the ifs function. I did this with if to include everyone who might have an older version of Excel. I'm going to copy this formula onto my clipboard, select all the cells that I want to apply conditional formatting to, home, Conditional formatting, new rule. Use a formula to determine what cells to format. Paste in my formula, format it with the same color. Click on OK. And now I can say greater than or less than. I can change my threshold and the conditional formatting response to both variables. 
Let's go on to look how we can create conditional formatting between two dates for an entire row. Let's do this on price. Let's say we were looking for items that were between 25 and 35 pounds. Now I can do the lower than threshold quite easily. I could say, is this value fixed on column greater than or equal to this lower threshold? But I also need to say, is it also less than or equal to this upper threshold? Now to consider both of these arguments at the same time, we use AND. So AND will allow you to specify multiple tests and if they're all met, AND will return true. That's my first test. My second test will be, is the price less than or equal to the upper threshold? Here's the bracket, press enter. If I copy this across and copy down, you can see that if the value is within the stated threshold, it will get true across the entire row. Let's copy this into conditional formatting. And there we are. So if I change these thresholds, let's say 10 to 15, then it highlights just those two products. Next, I want to look at how to highlight a whole row based on the current date. So any transactions that were performed today, which is the 10th of February, 2021, I want to be highlighted in this table. Let's try the same trick in our formula table. What I'm gonna do is say is this date here equal to, and I want this formula to automatically update based on today's date. And to do that, I can use the today function. It has a pair of brackets, but never anything in the brackets. The today function always returns the current date. We need to fix the A5 on column and then press enter. And if I copy this across and down, these dates are in ascending order. You can see that the last transaction relates to today's date. Let's paste that formula into conditional formatting. And you can see it's highlighted the record with today's date on it. Next, I'm going to highlight records showing a specific date. And to do that, I can just say, does this fixed on column equal our date up here, which I need to put $2 in. Press enter, copy across and copy down. You can see we've got those two records there that meet that criteria. So I copy the formula. And it does the same trick, apply the conditional formatting to anything with this date. And obviously if I change this date to the 15th of the 1st, 2021, it highlights the new record. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully you found it useful. If you have, please subscribe and I'll see you next video.